book an appointment and learn more about our preventative maintenance plans. Doors Plus, Garage Doors and more. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox KFXL Weather. Sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning. Your Lincoln forecast for today, many sunny skies and breezy conditions to start off. Then a chance of showers and storms late. You see a high around 83. Tonight, showers and storms likely, some of which could be severe if you see a low near 63. And tomorrow, more showers, potentially storms likely, the high around 73. I'm meteorologist Kyle Clark for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Oh, what a day. I could sure use an afternoon pick-me-up. Hold up. The new 93.7 The Ticket location has a milk coffee and tea inside? Oh, yeah. This is a game changer. Need an afternoon pick-me-up? How about a coffee or smoothie on your way to work? Stop by the Ticket Mill location on 1040 O Street to get your go-to drink or try out our new game day drinks exclusive to the Ticket Mill location. We know it'll make your day a mill yen times better. The need in our community, if you just look at the numbers, it's frightening. We're serving over a thousand kids every day. With the passion of our people, I really feel like our potential to be of even greater service to kids and families who are struggling is just unlimited. But in order to have the greatest impact, we need all the help we can get from the community. Ironhide Construction is hiring. They're looking for hardworking, self-motivated individuals who are team players. Ironhide Construction has openings for an experienced project manager, estimator, apprentice, skilled laborer, and a rector or installer. They will train the right people and make sure you understand the position and requirements. At Ironhide Construction, it's own it, be honest, and do it right. Apply today and learn more about their other benefits at ironhideconstruction.com where they're committed to you every step of the way. Do you need motivation to get to the gym on the weekend or even in general? Tune into the Movement Hour each Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. Movement Academy owner Robert Kuhlman will host the show as he introduces new ways to stay in shape. The Movement Hour every Saturday morning from 10 to 11 a.m. on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Tanner's Bar and Grill is the perfect place to watch your favorite MLB teams this spring and summer, as well as Nebraska baseball. Enjoy Tanner's delicious hamburgers, chicken lips, and daily specials, and wash it down with one of their tons of options of beers. You'll never have an issue finding the game as there are TVs everywhere throughout the space, so get in early and grab your spot and settle in for an afternoon or evening of baseball at Tanner's Bar and Grill, 30th and Yankee Hill. Ever wish you had another light switch on the other side of the room on a dark night? How much better would you sleep at night if you had a ceiling fan in your room? The High Electric Service Department is here to make your electrical what-ifs a reality. Whether you're looking to replace some outdated light fixtures or brighten up your counters with under-cabinet lighting, High Electric can handle all types of residential electrical installations and services. Give Erica a call at 402-466-6606 or visit high-electric.com to get started. This is Adam Carricker on the ticket. Position right of the quarterback out of the shotgun. First and 20. Jailbreak screen in the air. It is tipped. It is intercepted by Carricker at the Missouri 21 yard line. Live from the heart of Lincoln, America, eight year NFL vet and All American defensive lineman Adam Carricker. Shotgun snap to average. He's got the left arm going, and now he's got a whole lot of Adam Carricker. He rips him down inside the 25 yard line. <laughs> On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Here's your host, Adam Carricker. Welcome everybody in to Adam Carricker on The Ticket. I hope you're all having a glorious Monday. I wish everybody a case of the Fridays every Friday. I hope you're not having a case of the Mondays unless it's a good case of the Mondays. It's the fastest hour in radio each and every day from noon to 1 p.m. Central Time here on 93.7 The Ticket. As you know, Mondays and Fridays, I'm live. Tuesdays, it's the Character Chronicles. Thursdays, it's the Big Ten Show. Noon to 1 p.m. Central Time. On Wednesday, former All-American quarterback Steve Taylor drops the knowledge. Noon to 1 p.m. Central Time each and every day here at 93.7. The ticket. Tune in. Have some fun. Maybe we'll learn something, but hopefully we'll have some fun together, regardless of what we learn or don't learn. But real quick, Nebraska got a couple of commits over the weekend. I'm going to talk about that throughout this show. Uh, Somebody and you'll find out later on the show, said, and I quote, Nebraska is a sleeping giant 
that's about to wake up, end quote. So we're going to talk about that throughout the show. All right. Donovan Riola teaches a unique way of blocking. I'm just going to be blunt. I've never seen it before in my life, and I'm very intrigued by it. Now I'm going to talk about that at the end of the show. Um, it's very different. I want to learn more about it because it is unique, and I find it intriguing. I'm going to talk about that throughout the show as well. We got two blazing speed demons to commit over the weekend at wide receiver. That's true and legit. Talk about their times as well. As always, send in your questions, your comments, your thoughts, your concerns. Now, we've always saved the end of the show for the people's segment. Last show, as people were sending in comments, it wasn't just questions all the time. It was comments. I read them throughout the show. So I want to do that going forward a little bit more. So send in your questions, thoughts, concerns, comments, otherwise to 402-464-5685. And I will read them throughout the show. I will offer my thoughts, answers, et cetera, throughout the show as well on Friday. Bill Goldberg will be joining me. I got clarification on that thumbs up he sent me last week. It was all sorts of confusion. It was mayhem. We texted like 82 times, but he will be joining me on Friday. WWE Hall of Famer, Bill Goldberg, 1230 Central Time right here on Night 3.7. The ticket. I got a special guest who's going to join me here in a moment. And for those who heard my show last Friday, the family and I are moving back to Lincoln and we're pumped. And we're putting in a pool. And so I did. I reached out to a few different pool services, businesses, etc. in the area. And Bonzo Pool is is who's going to be working with me. Now, they're not a sponsor of this show, okay? They're just, just seems like a good dude. Jeff Bonzel's the owner, like just wants to do a good job. And when you run into people like that, you show them love. So I'm going to be sharing kind of the story as we put in this pool. And yes, I already about broke my coccyx. Not, we haven't even broke ground on the pool yet, but in Steamboat, at a pool that was only five foot deep, I did a cannonball. Let's just say my pool will not be five foot deep. I about broke my coccyx, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, that's the word the doctor used when we chatted with him in between ski runs. All right, but I'll be chatting about that as the, the pool goes in. The kids are all excited. So again, you can check them out at bonzelpool.com. They're here in Lincoln. Address 3201 Pioneers Boulevard. Phone number if you want to reach out and call 402-488-0148. Now, I reached out to a black shirt legend this morning said hey you want to hop on and he said yes and he's one of my favorite dudes that i get to chat with every time i come back get to see a former player's practice whatever the case may be so he's going to join me now a little bit of background as as if he needs an intro i did find this interesting i did not know this until this morning he was the only junior college recruit in his recruiting class in 1995 Okay, 1995, first team all big, big eight, second team all American, a national champ, led the black shirts with 162 tackles, 27 solo stops, two pick sixes. Two, I never had a pick six. I'm so jealous. Really, I just wanted one. I had one interception against Missouri for a, a negative yard return, two block punts. That was that's Terrell Farley, the guy coming on, not me. He had 92 yards interception worth of interception returns in 95, and obviously followed up with a solid season in 1996. Mr. Terrell. Farley, how you doing, my friend? What's up, Adam? How you doing, man? Dude, I appreciate you joining me. And right off the top, what was it like? It was no trans. Well, there was no transfer portal. People could transfer, but it was very different back then. Being the only junior college recruit in your class, what was that like? Uh, well, it was kind of odd um, being the only guy that that transferred, and especially coming from a junior college. But you know, you gotta. You got to get out there and still play the game. I know back then there wasn't talk of about coming in in December. They was just say come in in spring, be ready for fall camp. Just just come to, you know, just get in Lincoln early and work out with the team and try to fit in and try to do things like that. All right, now 1995, you guys win the chip, greatest team of all time. Heading into 1996, you're preparing for that season. What was that season like as you guys were getting ready for that 1996 season? Oh man, it was, it was, it was kind of crazy because there was there was always that talk of trying to be that that first team to do a three peat. So that was always in the back of our mind. So we we talked about that all summer, uh, try to get away from the second championship and and just try to better our team. We know we had most of the guys back on defense, so we knew we had a great shot. We had a new quarterback that was probably you know one of the things we worried about. We still had a great running backs. Still had a great line, kickers, 
But, you know, we still had that fault in, in Arizona State. So we still had our mindset on still winning the national championship. Man, I tell you what, for Sean Jackson, just always trying to get in the limelight. He's behind you. He was. He just moved. He's trying to get everybody's attention. Come on. Okay. What's it like doing a show every day on the captain, 10 to noon, right here on 93.7, the ticket with my man, Jake, with Sean Jackson. Check it out every day, ladies and gentlemen. Well, what's it like getting to do that show now, Terrell? Uh, well, it depends what captain you get. You know, that's, that's, that's <laughs> one thing. You know, it, it's the, it's, it, it was, it was for Sean you get or what VJ you get. So, you know, I mean, it's very exciting when we do it together and you know sometimes he streams because he's kind of busy with the car thing but when we, when we're together and we're live it's it's real fun it's still a fun show with him streaming but you know i i, I just like to interact with him live and because we've been knowing each other for for damn near 30 years man and, and for us to still be great friends i mean we always been good friends but you know this just draw me and him me and him closer together and it because we know each other and, and that's the and that's the great part about it all right, when you guys went against each other in practice, who won? Adam, I got a question for you now. Now we got we, me, Adam, me and Adam. You was talking last week, and uh, yeah, and coach, and you no, know, we was talking to Boyd Epley, and Boyd kind of shocked you when he told you I played at two hundred and two pounds, and 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 you took an yep. honor, and, and and you know I just wanted to get your point on that because I, I I was just wondering what question you had to ask me about that because we didn't never talk too much about it though. Well, so a couple of things. Well, okay. So I, I got like three questions off that. So I'll, I'll just go with the first one. Playing at 202 as a linebacker in a 4-3, it was a little bit different. It wasn't like a 3-3-5 or a 3-4 or anything like that. So did you ever feel like you got beat up at all? Just being a little bit lighter. And, and I'll be honest with you. I'll share a story. I'll keep his name out of it because I, I don't know that it's, it's, it's my place to share his name. But there was a linebacker. Okay. Uh -huh who led our team in sacks. He had 10 sacks, went down into a defensive end at, at, on nickel, uh, nickel situations, but in a regular 4-3 situation, he was a linebacker. Every Thursday, we'd weigh in. And I was a redshirt freshman, and he was, he was a senior. He was a junior college guy just like you. I pretty much just gave it all away, but I digress. <laughs> I would always weigh right after him. And mm -hmm. he would have bested about every week. He'd step on. He'd weigh 202, 203, 201. But every week, he'd turn around 220. 225 <laughs> like come on man so did you ever do anything like that and did you think being lighter helped you did you ever get more beat up like how'd you feel playing a little bit lighter weight as a backer well i i knew sometimes if they if they got their hands on me it was over with for me so that's that's one thing i knew um it, it was you know i think coach bowl and coach um uh, mcbride did a good job of teaching us techniques on how to keep linemen off me and Adam, you, you really have to give it to the four guys up front because without them demanding the the stuff that they demanded, even playing with Jason Peters, Christian Peters, Grant Wistrom, and and, and Jared Thomas, somebody's gonna get double, you know. And so that that frees me up a lot. And plus the the four three defense that Charlie McBride ran was basically made for the wheel to be an open a open lane kind of guy. And I guess I fit that mold because I was able to run from sideline to sideline. But it, it all starts up with the front four, man. And, and I give them props all the time because without those guys being able to do what they do to 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 command or demand that 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 double team or that chip block and, and it frees me up a lot. All right. So I just got a text from a friend of mine. He says, Adam, I've heard you share this story before. You know it's okay to share his name, so I will just go ahead and share the guy's name who used to, let's say, add 20 pounds to his weight, Demario Williams. And what's crazy <laughs> is he wasn't just a linebacker. I don't want to say just yeah. a linebacker, but he put his hand in the ground as a DN. So much like you guys actually have some similarities. He, when I would watch him play, I, I would think of you at times, okay, when I was on the sideline as a freshman watching him play, and I grew up watching you play as well. Now, my question I asked earlier, I don't know if you heard me, when you and Vershawn would go against each other in practice, who'd win? Oh man, we I, I gave Rashawn a buddy system. Oh no! And, and what I what I mean by a buddy system is, I didn't want to embarrass Rashawn because I did it to so many <laughs> offensive linemen that that he knew that because I, I hung out with him, so I gave him a buddy pass, and that yeah. means that I'm just gonna let you block me. Don't try anything funny. Don't try try to push me or or act like you're doing so great. We just 
fall on each other and leave it like that. So basically, you took it easy on him. Yeah, I took it easy. On him. I gave him a buddy pass. We had a brother. I call it a brother-in-law deal. No, I get it. You're not the only one to call it that. Um, <laughs> all right. So you actually just celebrated something that's really, really cool. All right. So you yeah. just celebrated eight years sober. So I thought that that was pretty cool. I wanted to tell you congratulations. I didn't know if you had anything along those lines you wanted to share with people before we start to talk a little bit of modern day Husker football. Well, it's not, I'm going on nine years this year. So, but, um, okay, nine yeah, years, man, it's, it's, um, something I'm proud of, man. It's something that, 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 um, I don't know. It, it just needed to happen, man. I was just, I, you know, sometimes you get tired of some things and you got to, you know, you just got to wake up and tell yourself one day, this is the day. And I guess that day it happened nine years ago that it, it was really going to happen, but I had a lot of help along the way, man. I, um, good friends like Rashawn and, and, and the guys, Ricky Simmons, coach Osborne, uh, just, just people that people that I roll with, they, they accepted it and, and, and they helped me along the way. So, you know, I'm trying to spread the joy and, and help a person that I can help. And, if you can always teach one or help one person, man, that's that's the best I can. You know, I'm, I'm happy for that. All right, we're getting some comments to roll in here. I hope I pronounced this last name correctly. Do it some justice. Justin Rogi says it's party time. Let's go. Stephen Costello says let's go, Adam. All right, and this actually last comment leads into one of the next questions I have for you. So Dion Pryor says fans around the league do not think Nebraska will be any good, and the improvements Rule makes will only get us to a bowl game. Man, are they going to be surprised. So talk to me about your thoughts on Rule's offseason so far as he heads into year two, and what do you think we can realistically expect from the Huskers this fall? Well, um, year two, he, he's, he's doing better than probably than what Scott Frost did in year two, just with the recruiting class, being able to lock down most of the um, in-state kids was, was, a, was one of the, the best things he, he was able to do. Uh, just snagging Dylan, um, Riola, first of all, snagging him from UGA, uh, being able to go into the transfer portal and get some, some crucial receivers that can help this team out. Um, the, the, the sky's the limit for Nebraska. You know, I can't put a limit on how many wins right now because, you know, this team has a long way to go, you know, through summer league, through summer ball. But, you know, Rip being, you know, for me, just, you know, covering them and, and doing all the radio things. I think that we have a great chance to probably win eight games. You know, I think the Colorado game is probably going to be the, the 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 earliest game of the year to test this team because they have great DBs and we have some good receivers. So, and then this is going to be, you know, who going to be able to stop who? I think. All right. So when you look at the defense, got a lot of guys coming back, a lot of experience. Now Malcolm Hartzog's practicing mostly at safety this spring so that means one of two things it means they like who they had have, have a corner whether it's tommy hill mario beerford uh bly uh, a couple of these guys are new guys transfer portal guys i know mario's a guy that's been brought up by evan cooper true freshman who arrived early so either they like those guys or it's just wide open but the other spot all right luke reimer's not coming back nick henrich isn't coming back we brought in stefan thompson all right, he's got years of starting experience, played for Tony White for three years up at Syracuse. Do you think he's going to be the starter in the middle of that defense at linebacker? Because I do think there's a couple of guys from Miami, athletic, fast guys, Willis McGay, he the fourth. You got Vincent Shavers. Okay, and Vincent, you know, he, I, you know, I first saw 205. I'm like, oh, he's got to get bigger. And then we just had the conversation we just had. So who knows what that means? But Willis is 230. What are your thoughts on replacing a guy like Luke Reimer, who was one of the cornerstones of this defense the past couple of years? Well, um, yeah, Luke was the the heart and soul of the linebackers for the last couple of years. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard to replace that leadership. Um, coming with the the guy from Illinois who played with who coach Coach White had to with him. Um, he came in kind of out of shape, so he got to earn his way back up and to coach's grace. Um, I, I believe Coach White said he got to, you know, do it in Nebraska way. But I think we're, we're, we're missing one thing about these linebackers that you had a guy in, in Javen Wright who last year came probably was third on the team in tackle. So you have to you have to look at giving him a shot first because he did end the year on some good playing. So you have to look at that. And then with the Vincent Shavers guy, you really got to find packages for him to to throw in there and, 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 and the, the blitz with. The one thing about this linebacker crew is that 
they're, they're young, but you still got the Gabar guy. You still got the other guys that that played a lot last year, and and and, and it's a good group, good group of linebackers. Um, very. I, I met coach. Um, the coach who coached the linebackers at the spring uh, spring uh, practice we went to. Very nice guy. Uh, I think he's trying to really get a grasp of these linebackers, but I think it's a good group. I think they might. I think they might be the. They're going to surprise us a lot this year about how good these linebackers are going to be speed wise. Because I know a bunch of these guys can run, so we're going to have a very fast. We're going to have a faster group of linebackers than we had in the past, and that's going to help us a lot on passing situations. But I want everybody just to keep a uh, um a lookout on Buddha. Um, what's Bo- I forgot it. I just said his name, Javen Wright. So I think Javen Wright is, is is probably one of the leading candidates to be that middle linebacker. Uh, big guy, six four, about two twenty. So he's probably gonna bulk up a little bit more. Uh, Michael Booker, the third, he's he's put on twenty pounds at linebacker, and then the other guys that we had that started last year. So this group might be a good group of linebackers. You're absolutely right. There's some guys that are coming back last year. A couple guys you already mentioned who are going to be in that convo for the starting job. You know, hopefully Stefan gets in shape sooner, much rather than later. Okay. And it's we just got a couple interesting comments. I'll read one. St- uh, Stephen Costello says, Terrell is a beast. Love him. And VJ, chop it up. And then Vincent Shaver Sr. says, Vincent is 6'2", 220. And I'm happy to hear that. I just go off what they're listed. And, you know, we know how accurate that can be, Terrell. But according to Vincent Shaver Sr., Vincent is 6'2", 220. And that works for me. All right. Next question I got for you. I've seen VJ kind of walk around in the background a couple of times. He's still, I think he finally went outside. But uh, all right, this defense, okay, because I agree. The speed, the athleticism that they're bringing in, it is definitely better than we've had in a while here at Nebraska, with all due respect. How good can this defense be with Tony White back? So many returning starters. The defensive line is going to be a strength. And if you can win up front, you can be really good. Plus, they've got athletes other places. I just saw, and I'm going to look this up real quick on my phone. It'll take me about two seconds. I saw a graphic where the top eight defense is going into next year. There was a prediction made. Now, it's funny because five of these teams are in the Big Ten. But number one is Michigan, number two, Ohio State, number three, Iowa, number four, Oregon. Top four are all Big Ten. Then you got Georgia, number five. You got Clemson, six. You got seven, Notre Dame, Nebraska, eight. Do you feel like Nebraska can be a top 10, top eight, top five overall defense in the country next year? Ooh, it it, it it comes to, oh, man. I mean, last year we got torched by 400 yards by Colorado. Now, we can't have that happen at the beginning of the season. Um, You know, it, it's kind of hard to say because if, if you do win by big, you know the starters come out and the other team comes in because I went through the similar thing at Nebraska here. But I think Tony White does a good job of, of mixing these guys up in and out and and rotating a lot. I don't I don't know about you, Adam, but I don't like to come out the game. But um, I think this defense. You know, I, I think this is year two of the defense, and the more they learn it, the better they can grasp it, and the better they line up. They feel when they line up. Um, I think this defense can be all right. I, I mean, I'm not gonna step on any toes or anything, but you know, I, I just can't, you know, grade them right now. You know, I, I know how many starters and how many other players we have back, but, you know, it, it, I, I really got to get some games on that belt before I can really give you a top 10 vote. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all kind of speculatory at this point. We're learning more as we go along throughout the spring. You know, for me, I look at those top, those first seven games. There's only one halfway decent offense on there, and that's Colorado. Then you look yeah. at the the last half. It's really, I mean, UCLA is going to be brand new. They got a head coach who's never even called plays. One of the greatest running backs ever, Deshaun Foster. But they're they're a a gigantic question mark, okay? Iowa and Wisconsin don't typically light up the scoreboard, although they're solid. You look at USC and you you look at Ohio State as the two teams that can score. The other thing that would help, we struggled to stop the pass last year, but there were several times you mentioned the Colorado game. The defense actually played really good that first half. But the offense put them in bad position after bad yeah. position. And eventually, they got wore out. So, what do you think is the biggest key to the defense taking the next step next fall to try to try to be a top ten, top five defense? Because Tony White has kind of put it out there; they want to be one of those top defenses. Uh, I think. I mean, we gotta we gotta um, 
we got to make a lot of turnovers, you know. I mean, it's, it's one thing being a good defense with stats and, and, and being able to stop the run, but the more we can turn the ball over and, and, and put the offense in great positions, the more it, it helps out the, the offense. So I think in creating turnovers and getting off the field on third down is one of my biggest concerns with this defense. All right, man. I'm kind of kind of put you on the spot with this one, but just to have some fun with it. Is there any untold stories or maybe something people don't know that you'd be comfortable with sharing with the fine folks at home? Anything that comes to mind? It can be football, non-football. It, it doesn't matter, man. Just have fun with it, whatever comes to mind. Something come to mind there, Terrell? Oh, man. I, I always, man. I, I, be, I was um, – I've been a granddad for about three months, so it's, it was a joy. I flew down and seen my grandbaby. And th- th- it's, obviously, it's my first one, but um, just just seeing the my son have a child, and for me, you know, starting this whole gen- another generation, man, it's just it, it's just a happy feeling, man. Now I get something to look look forward for look forward to in the in the in the far in life, and and hopefully I I'll, I can make it to to one day bring my grandchild to a game up here. That'd be awesome. And congratulations, man. That's pretty cool. So I appreciate you joining me. Thanks for taking the time. Check out the captain with my man, Jake, for Sean Jackson and Terrell Farley every day here on the ticket from 10 to noon. All right. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. It's $5.99 barbecue time. Hurry to Hog Wild for a complete barbecue meal that's only $5.99. Get a one meat sandwich loaded with our award winning barbecue plus your choice of a classic side and drink for just $5.99. Upgrade your sandwich to beef brisket for just a dollar more. Join us for lunch or dinner in Lincoln at 3210 Cornhusker Highway. Order online at gohogwild.com. But don't be late, we close at 8. Hi, this is State Senator Carolyn Bozin. As a state senator, wife, and mom, I believe Lincoln is a great place to work and raise a family. My husband Reggie and I are local family business owners and actively involved in our community. Last year, I voted for the largest property tax relief package in Nebraska history. Property tax relief is important to every family, and I will continue to deliver more property tax relief to working families. This is Carolyn Bozin, and I am asking for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Bozin for Legislature. Tune in every Wednesday night from 9 to 10 p.m. for the Malone Radio Show on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Don't miss the opportunity to learn about the Malone Community Center's goal to eliminate multi-generational poverty in Lincoln and the surrounding area. It's the Malone Radio Show with Executive Director John Goodwin and Sports Director Mike Hunter every Wednesday night from 9 to 10 p.m. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Hi everyone, Kendall Warnock, A1 Automotive in downtown Lincoln. Spring is here, summer is fast approaching. With weddings, vacations, and weekend getaways on your mind, do not let car issues prevent you from getting where you need to be. Car problems shouldn't be something that you put up with. Let us get you back on the road in comfort and safety. We diagnose all makes and models from Porsches to Hondas, Toyotas, and Chevrolets. We fix a variety of issues with all of them with our talented techs and our experienced staff. A1 Automotive at 11th and L, downtown Lincoln. Always honest answers. The Double the Saving Sales event is happening now through April 22nd at Bonds All Pool and Spa. During this event, buyers can take advantage of up to $1,500 in savings and receive 0% APR for 60 months. Visit the Bonds All Pool and Spa showroom at 33rd and Pioneers or visit their website at bondsallpool.com to learn more about their hot tub sale. Act fast because this offer ends soon. Bonds All Pool and Spa, every day made better. The need in our community, if you just look at the numbers, it's frightening. We're serving over a thousand kids every day. With the passion of our people, I really feel like our potential to be of even greater service to kids and families who are struggling is just unlimited. But in order to have the greatest impact, we need all the help we can get from the community. Ready to upgrade your combine in 2024? The team at Landmark Implement is here to help find the right combine to fit your operations needs. Choose from 4.9% for up to 60 months or a 12-month interest waiver, followed by John Deere financial rates with approved credit through the end of April. When you purchase a pre-owned S or X series combine from Landmark, 
No, you are backed by Landmark's extensive parts and service network with mobile techs and parts drop-off points to keep you up and running. View our current inventory online at LandmarkImp.com or stop by your local Landmark to experience the Landmark difference. Buckle up and hang on. This is going to be a good one. The fans of Kansas Speedway know how to have a good time. One that celebrates fantastic finishes oh, and family-friendly facilities. Trading paint. We got beauty. And tailgating tradition. Burnouts, beer, and barbecue. Oh, it'll for sure be a good time. And you are all invited. NASCAR weekend at Kansas Speedway, May 4th and 5th. Get your tickets now at kansasspeedway.com. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox, KFXL Weather. Sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Your Lincoln forecast for today, many sunny skies and breezy conditions to start off. Then a chance of showers as storms late. You see a high around 83. Tonight, showers and storms likely, some of which could be severe. You see a low near 63. And tomorrow, more showers, potentially storms likely, the high around 73. I'm meteorologist Kyle Clucker for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. At Parkview Animal Hospital in Lincoln, it's not just their professional care that sets them apart, but their warm staff and state-of-the-art facilities. Whether it's for a routine checkup or a comprehensive medical procedure, at Parkview, your pet isn't just another number, but a valued member of their caring family. Visit them at pahlincoln.com today and in person just south of 14th and Pine Lake Road. Parkview Animal Hospital, your pet, our passion. For happier, healthier furry friends. Where will your path take you, traveler? To seek fortune in a new career? Or on a journey to distant lands for a well-deserved vacation? Wherever you go, one distraction could spell disaster. You can change your fate, adventurer. Don't drive distracted. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. You're listening to Adam Carricker on The Ticket on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Adam Carricker on The Ticket. All right. Use that phone line. Call or text 402-464-5685. Also send in your comments if you're watching on YouTube. I can see those as well. I right, comment on YouTube. Send in your questions. Comments, thoughts, concerns, or otherwise, 402 464 5685. Stephen Costello says, Can't wait to see the one guy to step it up and own this defense, a linebacker that is the enforcer. He says, This is what an elite defense, that's what an elite defense has. All right. So, real quick, before we dive into the next topic, there is someone who believes that Nebraska is essentially a sleeping giant that is about to awaken. But before we dive into that, as always, you can check out the Character Chronicles. Check them out on YouTube. Go to characterchronicles.com. I gave my thoughts on Dylan Raiola, Daniel Kalen, Heinrich Harburg. Their ceiling, okay? Recently, also, top five newcomers to Nebraska football and impact players, I should say. Top five newcomers and impact players to Nebraska football in 2024. You can check those out. At the character chronicles all right ladies and gentlemen nebraska currently has in their 2025 recruiting class five commits all right tyson terry of omaha north defensive lineman 6'2, 280 jackson carpenter who just committed over the weekend out of lincoln lincoln southwest listed as an athlete most likely wide receiver 6'2, 185 we're going to talk about him more in just a second Caden Vermass out of Millard North from Omaha, athlete, six foot, 190. Bryson Hayes, going to talk about him in a second as well. All right, out of Mays, Kansas, wide receiver, 5'11", 180. And Connor Booth out of Bishop Newman, Wahoo, running back, six foot one, 212. All right, currently, very early on, Nebraska has got the 40th overall rank recruiting class. Composite rank is 40 as well. No transfers as of yet couple of things that are interesting to me. Number one, four of these five early commits are from Nebraska. As Terrell mentioned earlier, Rule has done a great job of saying, no, we're going to win the recruiting battle in the state of Nebraska once again. And that's an important thing. Yes, you got to go elsewhere to get all your needs. But you start in the state of Nebraska, even that 500-mile radius. I've said it for years. I'll say it again, and I'll say it five more thousand times. 
And uh, good luck to anybody ever changing my mind. Because I've actually had people argue with me about that, which I thought was interesting. And they're like, well, they got to be good football players. Well, thanks a lot, Sherlock. Obviously, they got to be good football players first. Like, good grief. We're not just going to offer a kid because they're from Nebraska, but you got to get the good football players out of Nebraska to go to the University of Nebraska. All right. And there's an individual from Wahoo. All right. I just mentioned his name, Connor Booth. Now, watched a little bit of the film on Connor, not a ton yet, but I've known from some people from Wahoo. Good people. Good salt of the earth people. But the people that I've known, which is not a ton, I could probably count them on two hands. Boy, are they unique. All right, Tyler, if you're listening, I'm talking about you. Mitch, if I'm you're listening, I'm talking about you. You folks are unique. I need to get a wider knowledge base of folks from Wahoo. Because right now, I, I, I'm just going to say unique, interesting, okay? They stand out from the other folks I know from other towns, okay? And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm saying it is unique and it is interesting. So I, I need to get to know some more folks from Wahoo. And actually, uh, Tyler's one of my good buddies. He, he won't care if I say his name, Tyler Tully, and he was a walk-on. University of Nebraska defensive end, one of the first guys I ever met uh, the first time I walked on to or, or I, I joined a conditioning, summer conditioning session. It was Tyler and actually my future brother-in-law, Jeff McBride, were the first two guys I ever met. So uh, Tyler, love you, but you know you're crazy. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Bryson and let's talk about Jackson. Now, Bryson Hayes, a couple of speed demons here. All right, Th these guys are legit fast. One of them owns a school record. The other one owns a faster 40 time than Trey Palmer. All right. And it was Bryson Hayes, wide receiver, who committed on Sunday, said, and I quote, Nebraska is a sleeping giant that's about to wake up, end quote. Now, he cited his relationship with Rule. He cited the culture. He cited where he believes this program is going as to why he committed to the University of Nebraska. Now, he's from Kansas, all right, the most recent commit to the Huskers 2025 recruiting class. Now, he runs a legit 4-3-3, 40-yard dash. Trey Palmer ran a 4-3-4, and we know he's got blazing speed. All right, Bryson's 5'11", 180 pounds, chose Nebraska over Kansas, Kansas State, Iowa State. All right, now last year, he's a three-star player as a junior. Okay, 60 receptions, 10 touchdowns, 962 yards receiving. An average, this was, this was the number that stood out to me. Average 16 yards per catch. Okay, that, that, that's, that, that, that's a large number of yards to average per catch. This is a, an individual with big play potential every time he touches the ball. Now, he has a 10-6, 100-meter dash, great speed, great agility. He's not a guy. Now, he's got other D1 offers, obviously, Power 5 offers. Okay, now, you could say, well, they're not Big Ten. They're not SEC. Yes, there is a clear division between Big Ten and SEC and everybody else at this point. But they are, uh, I guess, power four while the ACC is still around. Okay, technically, there's a power four. There's probably a, a top two now. But this is the type of guy that Matt Rule goes after. He goes, he likes big guys, and he likes speed. You can't coach speed. And one of my favorite quotes from Bobby Bowden, and I quote, speed, either you have it or you're chasing it, end quote. I've remembered that ever since I was a kid. The old tomahawk chop, wide right, all that good stuff. Okay, I remember that quote because he's right. Speed, either have it or you're chasing it. So this individual, six, uh, let me see. Bryson Hayes, let me get back on the right player here as I look at my notes. 5'11", 180. Okay, so this is an individual with really good agility, great speed, playmaking ability. These are the types of guys that Matt Rule goes after. He wants to bring in speed guys, fast guys, athletes, and then you develop them. And then you develop them. It's interesting because with college football, the way it is in today's day and age, not many people want to develop. Not to the level that Matt Rule does. It's also hard to do it because people come and go so fast. It's really hard to do it, which is why his retention rate of the players from last year's Nebraska team coming back to this year's Nebraska team is so vital. His philosophy does not work if players are coming and going all the time. Some are going to come and go. That's just the nature of the beast nowadays. But if the majority of your players are not staying, it, what Matt Rule wants to do will not work. A majority, vast majority of the players stayed. And that's why I legit think there's going to be a true jump in year two, just like there always is under Matt Rule. 
I was curious to see how he was going to handle the transfer portal. NIL, things he's never had to deal with. Was that philosophy? How's that going to play out? So far, so good going into year two. We're all obviously hoping it stays that way. So Bryson Hayes is the type of guy that Matt Rule goes after. So is Jackson Carpenter. All right, earlier that same weekend, Nebraska got two wide receiver commits within 24 hours this past weekend. All right, Jackson Carpenter committed. Legacy player from Lincoln Southwest. Okay, 6'2", 195 pounds, a three-star, son of a Nebraska tight end Tim Carpenter, who was a part of all the national championship teams in the 90s, played from 93 to 97. Okay, now he also, this is a school record at Lincoln Southwest. He also has a 10, 600-meter dash and a 39-inch vertical leap. So Bryson Hayes has a little bit more that short burst speed. Jackson Carpenter's got a little bit longer length, like he's 6'2". Their, their, their weights are relatively the same, but his explosiveness. I mean, he's a three-sport athlete. I love three-sport athletes because they haven't come anywhere near their potential. You get, them, you get them to college, you get them to focus on one thing, and those are the guys who's, who reach their potential the fastest. They're usually the most well-rounded. Honestly, they typically tend to be a little bit more, more sane, and I say that with all due respect. A lot of times you get 10, 11 year old kids and they, they specialize in one thing. And I've seen it. They tend to go nuts over the time because they get sick and tired of it. Their body parts get worn out from doing the same thing over and over too. But mentally, they just kind of, they kind of get sick and tired of doing it. This guy's fresh mentally. He's a well-rounded athlete and he's got a 39 inch vertical leap. Now I actually looked, I looked this up. He's very explosive. Had he gone to the NFL combine as a high school junior, as he currently is, he would have been tied for eight, the eighth best vertical leap. Okay, tied with Washington wide receiver Rome Odunze. By the way, he's probably going to be a top 10 pick. Okay, when it comes to best vertical leaks at the NFL Combine this year with the 39-inch vertical leak. Now, his 40-yard his dash is 4.48 as, as his junior. 28 catches, 514 yards. Okay, seven touchdowns. Now, depending on where you look, some recruiting services have him ranked a two-star, some a three, most a three. I saw some people kind of comment. When it came to these two young men and some of them, some folks were like, oh, we're just bringing in this and that. We need higher rated guys. We need this. We need that. Yeah, that's nice. That's awesome. I mean, who, who would, who's going to turn down a five-star guy? But here's the deal. Have you listened to what Matt Rule wants to do? He wants to bring in guys like this. He wants to bring in athletes and develop them. Like, had you just, had you just not told me anything, not the positions that they play, not the schools that have talked to them, not the schools they're interested in, and just giving me the vertical leap, the the 40-yard dash times, 100-meter dash times, and just said, is this the type of player Matt Rule would be interested in? I would have immediately said yes. Like, this fits what he wants to do. So, to me, this is a great fit to what Matt Culture, or Matt Culture, to what Matt Rule is wanting to do with the culture of his team. Kind of combined a couple of words there. But I, I think they're going to be great additions to the football team. And I'm excited to see what they can do for the Big Red. And I do. I, I love that there's so many Nebraska kids that have already committed. Obviously, we'll go beyond the borders as well to get everything that we need. Okay, But the, the 2025 recruiting class is very early on. Only five commits so far. Nebraska's current recruiting class, okay, most recent recruiting class, I should say, now that it's done, had 31 total players. 31, the most in the nation. All right, tied for the second most. All right, and I talk about this on another show as well, is Georgia, Alabama, North Carolina, and Oklahoma at 28. So Nebraska had by far the biggest class, and those are some pretty good programs that are bringing in 28. Then there's a lot of programs that are bringing in like 24, 23, 20, 25, whatever the case may be. So I, I think these are perfect fits. I think these are speed guys. I think these are playmakers. You heard Terrell talk earlier in the show about how we got more athleticism at the linebacker position that we've had in quite a few years, he's absolutely right. More speed, more athleticism. Hopefully that translates to being really good football players. And that's where Corey Campbell in the weight room comes into play. And you could see that we were stronger, better conditioned as games wore along last year than we had been in quite a while. So Corey's obviously doing a good job. It comes into Matt Rule doing what he wants to do, which is develop players. Get that talent, get that speed, get that athleticism. Get the things that you can't coach. Take those tools and then build yourself a football player. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Donovan Riola, the offensive line coach, seems 
happy with what he's seen so far from his veteran offensive line. Now, he's got an interesting way that he's coaching them to block. I'll offer some thoughts. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Where will your path take you, traveler? To seek fortune in a new career? Or on a journey to distant lands for a well-deserved vacation? Wherever you go, one distraction could spell disaster. You can change your fate, adventurer. Don't drive distracted. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Buckle up and hang on. This is going to be a good one. The fans of Kansas Speedway know how to have a good time. One that celebrates fantastic finishes oh, and family-friendly facilities. Trading paint. We've got beauty. And tailgating tradition. Burnouts. Beer and barbecue oh it'll for sure be a good time and you are all invited nascar weekend at kansas speedway may 4th and 5th get your tickets now at kansasspeedway.com at parkview animal hospital in lincoln it's not just a professional care that sets them apart but their warm staff and state-of-the-art facilities whether it's for a routine checkup or a comprehensive medical procedure at parkview your pet isn't just another number but a valued member of their caring family Visit them at pahlincoln.com today and in person just south of 14th and Pine Lake Road. Parkview Animal Hospital, your pet, our passion. For happier, healthier furry friends. Rosie Sports Bar and Grill, open for lunch and dinner at 1501 Center Park Road. NIPCO is hiring CDL drivers for Ready Mixed Concrete, Husker Concrete, and Beatrice Concrete. NEBCO offers great pay, medical and retirement benefits, paid time off, and they pay for CDL training. Apply today and start your new career with a $2,500 hiring bonus. From NEBCO's beginning in 1908, it's the employees that have formed the company's solid foundation. Start your career today. Visit NEBCOinc.com. That's N-E-B-C-O-I-N-C.com. Wall-to-wall wine and spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top shelf liquor to crowd favorite beer, Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. Ready to upgrade your combine in 2024? The team at Landmark Implement is here to help find the right combine to fit your operations needs. Choose from 4.9% for up to 60 months or a 12-month interest waiver, followed by John Deere financial rates with approved credit through the end of April. When you purchase a pre-owned S or X series combine from Landmark, know you are backed by Landmark's extensive parts and service network with mobile techs and parts drop-off points to keep you up and running. View our current inventory online at LandmarkImp.com or stop by your local Landmark to experience the Landmark difference. 93.7 The Ticket is proud to provide listeners with daily opportunities to win contests and prizes on our airwaves, and would like to take this opportunity to remind you of a couple rules. All participants must be 20 or older and must wait 30 days after winning a prize before participating in another contest. Once you win, you have 30 days to pick up your prize at the KNTK Studios, 1040 O Street in Lincoln, or your prize will be forfeited. Thank you for participating in our contest, and thank you for listening to 93.7 The Ticket. In every office, there's two types of people. There are those who bring in bagels and those who eat the bagels that someone else brought in. Everybody likes the first person. Be that first person. Weekday mornings at 7.30, you have a chance to win a business box of bagels from Bagels and Joe. All you have to do is shut up simple. Two questions for you, two for sip. Win and the bagels are yours. Lose, well, you don't want to lose. You lost Monday, you lost Wednesday, you're a loser. Shut up simple. Weekday mornings at 7.30 brought to you by Bagels and Joe. The captain for Sean Jackson.
Mike Minner, what's up, bro? When you look at Dylan, you're looking at quarterbacks that kind of come around once every 20 years. And this is a kid I'm looking at, I don't know how old he is, 17, 18 years old. And he is already directing things that a 17, 18-year-old kid should not even know. Changing the line, protecting. Okay, guys, I don't know where we've been two weeks of practice. Come on, man. Well, we got guys in the National Football League that can't do that. Old school with DP and J. So I knew that it was a crapshoot with the grown-up professional at the highest level. Who's going to bet? I don't know whether the starting center's girlfriend broke up with him, whether his parents have, have groceries that week. I don't know whether his roommate and him had a fight. So why would I, one, why would I want to bet on that? Uh, 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. You're listening to Adam Carricker on The Ticket on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Boom. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Adam Carricker on The Ticket. If you missed the show earlier, all right, I was joined by black shirt legend Terrell Farley. Now, I'd reached out to Bill Goldberg last week, sent him a few times. He just sent me a thumbs up. Didn't know what that meant. Said he might be on today. We had about 4,000 textual exchanges earlier, so he's going to be joining me Friday at 1230. But who needs Bill Goldberg when you got Terrell Farley? Anyways, I digress. I'm just kidding. Much love for both those guys. Appreciate them. They're both awesome dudes. Phenomenal at what they've done in the past and what they're currently doing right here, right now. So go out, go check out that Terrell Farley interview if you missed it. All right, They do a great job of cutting out the interviews here at the ticket, putting them out separately. Tune in Friday for my interview with WWE Hall of Famer, my favorite wrestler growing up as a kid. Bill Goldberg, as always, you can check out the Character Chronicles on YouTube, characterchronicles.com. If you want to be a sponsor of this show right here, right now, let us know. Until then, I'm going to keep promoting my show. I'm going to keep promoting the Chronicles and Bonzo Pools because he's doing me a solid. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, ah, we got another comment. As always, send in your comments, thoughts, questions, concerns, otherwise to 402-464-5685. Jay Shaw says, Adam, did you say you and the family are moving back to Nebraska? Well, to Lincoln... And that is awesome news. Yes, we are. We're coming back this summer. Once school is out, we are pumped. Half the family will be in Lincoln this summer. Those who do not play baseball, they'll come back with my wife. She'll get everything kind of sort of set up a little bit. I will stay with the baseball playing kids. Also, Addison, who qualified for, I'm just going to brag on her. She qualified for nationals and track last year. Eighth grade nationals as a sixth grader. Yeah, I'm proud of her. Uh, either way. But if she qualifies again, which we're kind of hoping for, uh, she'll be staying with me as well, and I'll bring the baseball playing kids. Hopefully, Addison's coming back from Nationals at track mid late July and June, and we will be joining the rest of the fam in Lincoln around August 1st uh, as we get ready to light up and get ready for fall camp and football season to be in full swing. Now, Donovan Riola, the offensive line coach, seems pretty happy so far, as happy as you can probably imagine he'd be at this point. All right, with the offensive line so far, he's got a lot of, he's got like some 20-year-olds. He's got some seniors. He's got some super seniors, COVID seniors. He's got mid-20s, I think 23, 24-year-olds on, on that old line as well. Good leadership. Now, it's interesting because he was talking the other day about how he coaches them with their hands to block. Now, ever since I was a kid, now, let me correct that. When I was a kid, my dad told me to put my hands together, okay, and then lead with my elbows and put elbow pads on my elbows. Now. Love my dad. I wouldn't be anywhere near where I am today without him. I have learned since, maybe not the best technique, and he even admitted later on, you know, maybe that was a little old school, but that's okay. That's the way they did it back in the day. I do believe there was a point in time where offensive linemen couldn't use their hands at all. So I think it originated from there. I never followed up to find out for sure. But every, and I was a quarterback, to be clear. I played offensive guard for one practice in seventh grade when the coach was, was pissed at me because uh, I kept throwing it to the open receiver instead of who he wanted me to throw it to. But I digress. So I've never really played offensive line. Now I've gone against about a million of them. And every time they're always taught elbows in thumbs up. Okay. Now what happens? And that, that's what they're always taught. Now what Donovan Riola says he teaches. Let me read it here. Cause I wrote down exactly what he said here. All right. He said he, he puts hands very differently. So I offensive lineman won't hold slash grab people. All right. He said, and I quote, we block with our knuckles up. Okay, end quote. And he said after Thursday's practice, and I quote, we don't grab people, right, because holding encourages lazy blocking. 
so we don't teach holding, end quote. Now, Raiola said he doesn't know exactly what other coaches teach. Now, this is a guy, for those who don't remember, I'm sure a lot of you do, but for those who don't, Donovan started 39 games in his collegiate career at Wisconsin. He was a team captain, three-time honorable mention all Big Ten, played six years in the NFL, okay? And I actually practiced against him a lot at the Rams and the Redskins or whatever they're called now, okay? And his brother Dominic, I'm sure you all know this, All-American, Remington Trophy winner, second-round pick, 14-year NFL career all with the Detroit Lions. So these guys have, have blocked a time or two in their life, you know, just, just saying. But I've always been taught elbows in, thumbs up. And that's how you get inside leverage. That's how it's inside hands win. It's the low man driving the feet inside hands. That's what wins. What he's saying is they block with knuckles up. So your thumbs are kind of, it's the opposite here. Your thumbs, if you can see me on YouTube, if, if you're just listening, try to envision this, your knuckles are up. So instead of elbows in, thumbs up, it's your knuckles are up, which forces your thumbs to go against each other. And, and I, I got to study this more. I got to learn this more. I'm intrigued by this. This is legit the first time I've ever, I've ever heard this. But obviously, this is a guy who's done it. His brother's done it. They're teaching it this way for a reason. They don't want people to hold. They want people to not grab on and block and drive and things of that nature. For me, I'll be, just be honest. If an offensive lineman came at me, it, it would be hard for them to get a hold of me at all, even just to block, and I would swipe their hands off. And my thought without having ever gone against someone who does this, is they would fall on their face. Now, again, I've never done this, okay? And he, t he teaches this, this way for a reason. He's had a million more blocks in his life, so is his brother, than I ever have. I, I am intrigued to learn more about this technique where the thumbs are up, I'm sorry, the knuckles are up, and you're kind of blocking like this, if you can see me on, on YouTube. And so for me, that's a unique way of blocking that I've never heard, and I'm intrigued by it. Now, Jay Shaw, I already read that comment. Sorry. If you've got other comments, you know, as always, 402 464 5685. We've got about two minutes left. I'll read them, answer your questions as well. I was intrigued because it's it's fairly universal when it comes to low pads, driving, driving the feet, choppy feet, elbows in, thumbs up. But it was universal for a long time, the pump formation. It was always the same pump formation. Then all of a sudden, now you see, you know. The, the guys on the line more spread out and you see three or four guys in the backfield. And then once you saw one team doing it, all of a sudden you saw three, four, five, six. Now everybody does it. So something that was done in a punt formation for God knows how long, all of a sudden somebody's like, well, this might be different. Let's give it a try. And now everybody else apparently likes it and thinks it's better as well. Not that it might be different, but it's different, but it might be better. Now apparently everybody else thinks it's better too. So I'm intrigued. Next time I see Donovan, I'll have to ask him, you know, other than, is it just purely about the holding? Why you block like this versus like this? Okay, because I would imagine if you're like this, it's harder to get your hands in close because inside hands do win. Yeah, everybody's benching with that 800-pound bench press with their hands out wide. That's awesome. That's great. That's going to develop upper body strength, unlike just about any other upper body lift. But don't forget that close grip bench press because that's where your hands need to be is on the inside. So I'm intrigued to learn more. I'm curious. I love, I look forward to, and I, I look forward to chatting with donovan and learning more about that the next time i see him because it's interesting i've actually had a couple of people hit me up on twitter because i didn't see his original comments at the press conference i had people hit me up on twitter hey adam what do you think of this and so i watched it and i found it quite intriguing so i'll tell i'll tell you this the offensive line ran block well last year okay the improvement in the pass blocking needs to continue to come especially if we're going to potentially, well, potentially, if we do have a freshman quarterback, two freshman quarterbacks starting, okay, I would think that this would create, if it's going to create challenges, if it does, it would create more challenges in the run blocking than the pass protection. So it didn't seem to affect them last year. I'm always learning, ladies and gentlemen. All right, thank you for joining me. We'll be back tomorrow with the Character Chronicles, Wednesday with Steve Taylor, Thursday with the Big Ten Show, Friday I'll be back here live once again with Bill Goldberg. And I'll also be chatting a little bit more about the defense, breaking down those top eight defenses that I saw in that graphic. All right, Jesse Pabian says, if your hands are open, it gives you more surface area to control. Hey, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Hey, I'm open to learning. It, it, it's all new to me. So, all right, tune in tomorrow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a great day. Go Big Red Nose, remember.
This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet, KNTK FM Firth, 93.7 The Ticket. Garage doors can be expensive. Are you keeping your